Good evening. <clears throat> Tonight, I'm going to read you The Robber Bridegroom. Uh, the Grimm Brothers version, anyway. <clears throat> Once upon a time, there lived a miller who had a beautiful daughter. He wanted to be sure that she was provided for and that she married well once she was grown up. He thought, when the right kind of man comes along and asks for her hand, I shall give her to him. Before long, a suitor turned up who seemed to be rich, and since the miller could find nothing wrong with him, he promised him his daughter. But the girl didn't care for him in the way that a girl should care for her betrothed, and she did not trust him at all. Whenever she set eyes on him, or when her thoughts turned to him, she was filled with dread. That's a red flag, she probably shouldn't continue with this, but... One day, he said to her, You're engaged to me, and yet you've never once visited me. The girl replied, I don't even know where you live. The bridegroom told her, My house lies deep in the forests. The girl made all kinds of excuses and claimed that she would not be able to find a way there. But the bridegroom said, Next Sunday, you have to come over to my place. I've already invited the guests, and I'll strew ashes on the path so that you can find your way through the woods. When Sunday arrived and the girl was supposed to leave, she became dreadfully frightened without knowing exactly why. Well, I have a feeling why. The guy seems like a creep. And she filled both her pockets with peas and lentils to mark the way. She carried, she, she entered the woods where she found the trail of ashes and she followed it carefully. But every step of the way, she threw some peas on the ground, first to the right, then to the left. She walked almost all day long until she got to the middle of the forest, where it was really gloomy. There she saw a house standing all by itself, and she didn't like the look of it because it seemed dark and spooky. She walked in. It was deadly silent. There was not a soul in sight. Suddenly, a voice cried out. Turn back! Turn back! My pretty young bride! In a house of murderers, you've arrived! The girl looked up and realized that the voice was coming from a birdcage hanging on the wall. Once again she heard, Turn back! Turn back! My pretty young bride, in a house of murderers you've arrived! The beautiful girl walked all around the house. What? <laughs> Why would she... Why would she... Some things just, just don't change. Uh, going from one room to the next, but it was completely empty. No one was there. Finally, she went down to the cellar, where she found a woman as old as the hills. Her head bobbing up and down. G can you tell me if my betrothed lives here? The girl asked. Who's your betrothed? I got... Huh. Oh, you poor child, said the woman. How did you get in here? This is a den of murderers. You think you're a bride about to be married, but the only wedding you'll celebrate is a wedding with death. Look over here. I had to heat up this big pot of water for them. When they, when you get into their hands, they'll show no mercy and will chop you into pieces, cook you, and eat you for their cannibals. You're lost unless I take pity on you and try to save you. The old woman hid her behind, uh, hid her behind a big barrel, <laughs> where no one could see her. Be still as a mouse, she said. Don't you dare move, or that'll be the end of you. At night, when the robbers, oh, at night, when the robbers are asleep, we'll escape. I've been waiting a long time for this moment. No sooner had she spoken those words than the wicked crew returned home, dragging another girl behind them. The men were drunk, and they felt no pity when they heard her screams and sobs. They forced her to drink some wine, three glasses full, one white, one red, one yellow. Is there yellow wine? And before long, her heart burst in two. The robbers tore off her fine clothes, put her on the table, chopped her beautiful body into pieces, and sprinkled them with salt. The poor girl was trembling with fear eh, in her hiding place behind the barrel, for she now understood what the robbers had in store for her. One of them caught sight of a golden ring on the little finger of the murdered girl, and when he couldn't pull it off right away, he took an axe and chopped the finger off. The finger went flying through the air, up over the barrel, and landed right in the girl's lap. Gross. The robber took a candle and wanted to search for it, but he couldn't find it. One of the other robbers asked, <clears throat> Have you looked over there behind the big barrel? Just then the old woman called out, 
Come and eat! You can search again tomorrow! That finger isn't going to run away. <clears throat> the old woman's, woman's right, the robber said, and they stopped searching and sat down to eat. The old woman put a few drops of sleeping potion into their wine. Before long, they had retired to the cellar and were snoring away in their sleep. When the bride heard the snoring noises, she came out from behind the barrel and crawled over the sleeping bodies arranged on the ground in rows. She was terrified that she might wake one of them up, but God guided her footsteps. The old woman went up the stairs with her, opened the door, and they ran as fast as they could from the den of murderers. The wind had scattered the ashes, but the peas and lentils had sprouted that was fast, and showed the way to, in the moonlight. The two walked all night long. In the morning, they reached the mill, and the girl told her father about everything that had happened. When the day of the wedding celebration arrived, the groom appeared, as did all the friends and relatives invited by the miller. At dinner, everyone there, asked, everyone there was asked to tell a story. The bride sat quietly and didn't utter a word. Finally, the bridegroom said to his bride, Don't you have anything to say, my love? You have to tell us something. Very well. She replied, I will tell you about a dream I had. I was walking alone through the woods and came across a house. No one was living there, but on the wall there was a cage, and in it was a bird that sang, Turn back, turn back, my pretty young bride, in a house of murderers you've arrived. Then it repeated those words. My dear, I must have been dreaming all this. I walked from one room to the next, and each one was completely empty. Everything was so spooky. Finally, I went down to the cellar, and there I saw an a woman as old as the hills, her head bobbing up and down. I asked her, does my betrothed live here? Live here. She replied, oh, you poor child, you stumbled into a den of murderers. Your betrothed lives here, but he is planning to chop you up and kill you, and then he'll cook you and eat you up. My dear, I must have been dreaming all this. The old woman hid me behind a big barrel, and no sooner was I out of sight than the robbers returned home, dragging a maiden behind them. They gave her three crowns of wine to drink white, red, and yellow, and her heart burst in two. My dear, I must have been dreaming all this. Then they tore off her fine clothes, chopped her beautiful body into pieces, and sprinkled them with salt. My dear, I must have been dreaming all this. One of the robbers caught sight of a gold ring on her finger, and since it was hard to pull off, he took an axe and chopped it off. The finger flew through the air, up behind the big barrel, and landed in my lap, and here is the finger with the ring still on it. With these words, she pulled it out and showed it to everyone there. That's what he said. The robber turned white as a ghost while she was telling the story. He jumped up and tried to escape, but the guests seized him and turned him over to the law. He and his band were executed for their dreadful deeds. The end.